going to have the opportunity to take three generations of the Ford GT, including the Ford GT40, out on Palma Racetrack. Hi, I'm Scott Rocknack, and I'm here with my brother Russ from Mesh, New England. Today we're at uh, Palmer, and we're going to be uh, playing with four GTs and GT40s. And Russ, this is a GT40, uh, one of the original ones, isn't it? This is this is a uh, 1965 GT40, and it's one of 50 that Ford had to produce to go racing. Um, the story behind the GT40 is basically was a, a grudge match, um, and what had happened was is that Ford had um, been in talks with Enzo Ferrari. Actually, Henry Ford II, Hank the Deuce, um, in talks with Enzo Ferrari to buy out Ferrari. Perhaps go racing together with Ford Ferrari or Ferrari Ford. Um, long story short, in 1963, the negotiations fell apart. And after Ford had spent tens of millions of dollars in due diligence in lawyers, contractual fees, and things like this, fell apart at the uh, conference room table with Enzo Ferrari basically telling Hank the Deuce to go f*** himself. It's true. So uh, Hank went home to Dearborn, Michigan and said to his R&D department, stop everything. We want to build a race car to go and beat Enzo Ferrari in his backyard. And that would be at Le Mans. So what they did is they started testing R&D on this car in 1963 to produce it in 1964. 1964 and 5 were years of, say, testing for the car. Kind of a, maybe a little bit of embarrassment for Ford because they didn't do exactly what they wanted to do. But in 1966, after he had a rebrief with his R&D team, they came out and won consecutively at Le Mans from 1966 to 1969. In 1966, they came in one, two, three. So that was Hank the Deuce's message to Enzo Ferrari from the Ford world and uh, a message right from Dearborn, Michigan to Fiorano and all the Italiano uh, race fans out there. We all now know what the GT40 is. Today we're celebrating the GT40 because we have three generations of the GT40. Not only do we have this beautiful 1965 version of the GT40 that's powered by a push rod 289 V8 with four Weber two barrels on it. That push rod 289 V8 went out and beat four liter V12 Ferraris at its own game. That's a cast iron block, no doubt, as we all know. The 1965 Ford GT40 pictured here, chassis number P1030, led a pretty protected life. The car was never really raced but used in promotions for Shell Oil, featured in the 1967 New York Auto Show, and then eventually handed over to Ford for inspiration while they were working on the new GT40, the Ford GT. In between the years 2002 and 2003, this car was used again in both video and film promotions. It's probably one of the most original examples of a GT40 left on the planet. So to be surrounded by two of these today is a privilege, let alone two of each of each generation. The second in the series here, this is a 2004 GT. 1995, in preparation for Ford Centennial, they built a concept car that harked back to its heritage in racing, which was the GT40, and they called it the GT90. That was unveiled at the Detroit Auto Show, and once again in preparation for their centennial marks, and they with, with their Mustangs and things like this as well, Thunderbird. The car didn't come to fruition until about 2002. It was reintroduced again as the Ford GT um, concept car. Now the Ford GT, you say what happened to the GT40? Ford GT came into play because somebody copyrighted the name GT40. Ford could not use it, so they said, oh, we're gonna call it the Ford GT. This is the 2006 version of the 2004 
to 05 versions of the Ford GT. So what's this rig? At the 2015 Detroit International Auto Show, this was introduced as the 2015 version of the Ford GT. This is actually the 2017 version of that series. And the car was built from 2015 to 2018 and they capped production on it. This car is a continuation of Ford's racing heritage once again with one purpose in mind and that is to go racing. This car can also be driven on the road as a docile car, you know, um, some owners drive them to Home Depot, Panera Bread, etc. Um, this is also powered by a EcoBoost V6 engine that's twin turbocharged, over 647 horsepower. So this car went racing at Le Mans, did very well, and is continuing the heritage of Ford's racing. So there's a gap between the one we just saw inside and this one. Did they stop production uh, between 06 and 15? Yes, they did. And they ceased production of the, this racing program for the cars. So many cars had to be built to go racing. For whatever reason, Ford didn't find it that important to put that into a racing project until the advent of a lot of the cars that are coming along these days, such as the, the hyper cars. This, I would say, is Ford's hypercar of the day. Powered by a 3.5 liter V6 twin turbocharged engine, producing 647 horsepower. This car is go-getter on the track, as you can tell from the last race of 24 hours of Le Mans, or the 12 hours of Sebring. You've seen this car race. This car does really well as any other Ford and um, is out there beating Ferraris once again. Ford once again on its hot pursuit to be first on race day.